Markiewicz Audio Works presents Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven From a script written and adapted for audio by Jason Markiewicz Performed by a full cast starring Jason Markiewicz and Brennan Volados Ravens Legend calls them harbingers of evil And for as long as tales have been told Ravens have been linked with darkness and death True to form, Celtic and Norse mythology links these ominous black birds, these consumers of carrion, these messengers of the hereafter, with crossing the final plain for those brave warriors who have fallen in battle. But this is not to say that ravens are singularly cloaked in bad omens. Some believe that ravens symbolize a mysterious yet positive force for strength and appear out of a deep need for personal reflection. And still others believe that both are true, where the power of the raven allows it to exist in the world between the living and the dead. First published in January of 1845, Edgar Allan Poe penned a tale of sorrow and remembrance using the foreboding raven as his ghostly interlocutor. Drowning in despair over the loss of his one true love this forlorn gentleman is visited by a grim courier with an even ghastlier vocabulary. Sitting as motionless and silent as a corpse on a bust above his chamber door, the raven passed judgment on the world below. Why did it enter his chamber on this bleak December night? Could it be Lenore returning to him from the ever after? Could it have been sent there to taunt him from the world beyond? Or? Has it arrived as a spiritual guide to help him cross the threshold? Decide for yourself in this full cast audio dramatization of one of the most revered and retold stories in the history of American literature. Take a seat by the fire, turn the lights down low, and let your mind escape as we bring you Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven. Thunderclap and torment more my core. My soul, that to this very night still mourns my love, Lenore. Now, upon a midnight dreary, while he pondered, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore. While he nodded, Nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at his chamber door. Who's there? Tis some visitor tapping on my chamber door. Yes, only this, and nothing more. And distinctly he remembered, it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly he wished the morrow. Vainly he had sought to borrow from his books an end to his sorrow, sorrow for his lost Lenore. <sighs> for the rare and radiant maiden, whom the angels name Lenore, is nameless here forevermore. And the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled him, filled him with fantastic terrors never felt before. So that now, to still the beating of his heart, he stood repeating, "'Tis some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, some late Visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. This it is, and nothing more. Presently his soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. 
Sir, I, um, or, madam, uh, truly, your forgiveness I implore. But the fact is, I was napping. And so gently you came rapping. And so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here he opened wide the door. Darkness there, and nothing more. Hello? Is anyone there? Deep into that darkness peering, long he stood there, wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortals ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and the stillness gave no token, and the only word there spoken was the whispered word, Lenore. This he whispered, and an echo murmured back the word, Lenore. Merely this, and nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all his stomach acids churning, soon again he heard a tapping, something louder than before. Surely, come now. Surely, that is something at my window lattice. Let me see then what I know to be, and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment, and this mystery explore. Tis the wind, and nothing more. Open here he flung the shutter, when, with many a flirt and flutter, from outside flew a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not a single bow or curtsy made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but, as if a noble lord or lady, perched above the chamber door. Perched upon a bust of palace, just above the chamber door. Perched upon that marble likeness of the wise and noble goddess. Perched there, and nothing more. Then the blackbird's own beguiling tricked his sadness into smiling by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance at war. Though thy crest is sheared and tight, thou art sure no coward's sight, ghastly, grim, and ancient raven wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's infernal shore. Quoth the raven. Nevermore. Much he marveled this ungainly fowl to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little relevancy bore. For they could not help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above that chamber door. Bird or beast upon the sculptured bust above the chamber door, with such a name as nevermore. But the raven, sitting lonely on that placid bust, spoke only that one word, as if its soul in that one word it did outpour, nothing farther than it uttered, not a feather than it fluttered, till he scarcely more than muttered, Other friends have flown before, and by tomorrow thy shall leave me, as my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, Nevermore. Startled at the stillness broken by reply so aptly spoken. It is doubtless. What it utters is its only stock and store, caught from some unhappy master, whom unmerciful disaster followed fast and followed faster till his songs one burden bore, till the mournful music of his hope that melancholy burden bore of never, never more. But the raven still beguiling all his sad soul into smiling, straight he wheeled a cushioned seat in front of bird and bust and door. Then, upon the velvet sinking, he betook himself to linking, fancy unto fancy, thinking what this ominous bird of yore what this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt, and ominous bird of yore meant by croaking, nevermore. This he sat 
engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing to the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned into his bosom's core. This and more he sat divining, with his head at ease reclining on the cushion's velvet lining that the lamplight gloated o'er, but whose velvet violet lining with the lamplight gloating o'er, she shall press, ah, nevermore. Then he thought the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen censer swung by God's own six-winged angels whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch, O oh, wretch, thy God hath lent thee. By these angels he hath sent thee. Delay thy condemnation, and drink away my sorrows from these memories of Lenore. Drink, oh, drink this sweet liqueur. To forget my lost Lenore. Quoth the raven, Nevermore. Distasteful prophet, thing of evil, prophet still if bird or devil. Whether Satan sent, or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore, Desolate, yet all undaunted, on this desert land enchanted, On this home by horror haunted, tell me, truly, I implore, Is there soothing for my wounds? Tell me, tell me, I implore, Quoth the raven, Nevermore. Demonic prophet! Thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, by that heaven that bends above us, by that God we both adore, tell this soul with burdened sorrow, if on some distant far tomorrow it shall clasp a sainted maiden whom the angels name Lenore, clasp a rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore. Quoth the raven, Nevermore. Well, be that our sign of parting, bird or fiend of manner upstarting. Get thee back into the tempest and the night's plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie thy soul has spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from out my heart. And take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven, Nevermore. And the raven, never flitting, still is sitting. Still is sitting on the pallid bust of Pallas, just above the chamber door. And its eyes have all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming. And the lamplight o'er the raven, streaming, throws its shadows on the floor. Lenore, I met you so. And his soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted. Nevermore. Nevermore. We hope you have enjoyed The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. This production was directed by Jason Markiewicz, who also wrote and adapted the script for audio. The cast included the voice talents of Jason Markiewicz and Brennan Volados, with Victoria Markiewicz as the voice of Lenore. Cinematic music heard in this production was exquisitely composed and performed by Hayden Folker and used under the Creative Commons Attribution License. The Way Out despair, 
and Drifting Away can be found at soundcloud.com forward slash Hayden dash Folker. Music promoted by freestockmusic.com. Production sound effects were independently recorded and edited by Markiewicz Audio Works, with the exception of the following magnificent effects, downloaded and used under the Creative Commons Attribution License. The Heavy Wooden Door, Opening and Closing, by D.W.O. Boyle, and The Thunderstorm, by Test Sound, both of which can be found at freesound.org. Original graphic designs and cover art for The Raven were masterfully created by John Markiewicz, and whose other works can be found at johnmarkiewicz.com. No part of this audio presentation may be played in whole or in part for an audience without express written consent. To view other titles and to keep apprised of future productions, visit www.markiewiczaudioworks.com. This has been a Markiewicz Audio Works presentation. Copyright 2021 by Jason Markiewicz. Production copyright by Jason Markiewicz. All rights reserved.